I'm trying to think of a port where you park closer to the land. Oh, Tower Bridge. We're in Trieste. The Piazza Unita d'Italia is the largest sea-facing square in Europe. It's surrounded by Vienna-style palaces and the City Hall has a tourist information office and we're going to explore that now. yourself for your visit to Trieste by going on the website and downloading the app and there's a walking tour that you can follow. The fountain has four statues representing the four continents. It was built in 1750 and Australia was discovered later than that. This statue is Charles VI of Habsburg and he declared Trieste a free coffee port. Trieste is the capital of Italian coffee and we couldn't leave without sampling some. In 1933, Hungarian Ile started his coffee business and he also invented the coffee machine. Cheers. The bronze statue of Emperor Leopold I of Habsburg sits in front of the Palace of Borsa Vecchia. This was originally one of the medieval gates to the wall of the city, defended by a tower and a bridge. And behind it is what remains of the Jewish ghetto from the 1930s. Let's go and have a look. The beating heart of Old Trieste, the ghetto as it's called today, was for two centuries the home of the Jewish community of the city and very much part of it. It was created in 1697 when several houses were requisitioned in the Portissa of the Riborgo district and starting that year the Jews had no choice but to live there. It was enclosed by a high wall with three gates kept under guard and closed down from sundown to sunup. Surveillance of the gates was entrusted to Christian guards who were paid by the Jewish community. Christians could enter the ghetto during the day but were forbidden to enter services in the synagogue. This Roman amphitheatre is easy to find, it's just a couple of blocks back from the square. Just above the Roman theatre, this antiquarium and burial ground exhibits objects from the Sittavecchia area. The Romans built the amphitheatre at the foot of San Giusto Hill and it has room for 3,500 spectators. The theatre is quite impressive and it was built at the end of the first century. So we have to climb some steps up to the church. Going up to San Jusco Castle. The Caterna Tower was built in the 14th century and was originally for nocturnal surveillance of the city walls. When you get to the top of the stairs, you'll see the castle of San Gusto and at the other side, over there, is the cathedral. 
The castle of St Gusto was built at the top of the hill in the 1600s in the Austrian-Hungarian reign to protect the city and provide housing. There is an armory, a museum and entrance is five euros. In front of the fort are the remains of a Roman city and this, like the amphitheatre, dates back to the first century and this square would be where the Romans would come to discuss business and law. This is where you can climb up 90 steps to the top of the bell tower. The cathedral was named after the patron saint who was sentenced to death in the 13th century and it was made by joining two old churches together, so inside are mosaics from the 12th century. You could easily walk past this, it's right next to the cathedral, it's the J.J. Winkleman Antiquity Museum and Lapidary Garden and it's free to come in Tuesdays to Sundays. There are examples of sacred monuments from Roman times. Apparently the Romans had a private religion which they celebrated at home and it was to do with their particular job and the deity is connected to that. And there are lots of explanations to help you understand what you're looking at. The sculpture gallery is on the lower level of the garden and this was built to house the most fragile objects and there's the cenotaph to Winkleman and it's surrounded by statues of Roman and Greek art. If you come in through the back door of the J.J. Winkleman Museum, you can go up to the castle, or if you go down here, you can come round to the James Joyce Museum, round the corner. Via Saint Michel goes down to the museum. We are on the way down to the James Joyce Museum, but on the way I've seen this sign for the Church of Santa Maria Maggiore, so we're going to have a look. So it took us on a detour through the park and now we're going down this road which is a bit precarious to say the least. The Church of Santa Maria Maggiore was consecrated by the Jesuits and it's the only Baroque church in the city.
Although we made a detour from the Via San Michel and we went up through the gardens and saw the church, we've seen a sign for the James Joyce Hotel, so I reckon that might be a clue. We found the James Joyce Museum. This is what you're looking for. Unfortunately, it's closed. Well, it is a Sunday. We're walking to um, the James Joyce statue. Seven minutes, it says. Beside the Ponderoso Canal is a statue of James Joyce, who lived and worked here for 15 years. He said his heart was in Trieste. Because of the position of Trieste, it's been ruled by Hungarians, Austrians, it's close to Serbia, it's now ruled by Italians. It's very inclusive. There are lots of cultures and religions. And this is the Orthodox Serbian Church. Trieste was once the most important seaport in the Austrian Empire. It remained part of it until the end of the First World War. After the First World War, it became part of Italy. The banks of the canal are lined with beautiful buildings which were built by the merchants. On this side of the ship there's a marine aquarium and a building that houses temporary exhibitions. At the moment it's Banksy. Let's have a look at the end of the pier. Here at the end of the pier there's a rooftop cocktail bar. Victoria Lighthouse was built in the 1920s as a memorial to the sailors that lost their lives in World War I. It's 223 feet high. You can still go in there. It's a working lighthouse. You can't go in between the hours of 1 and 3, but Friday to Saturday, other time, you can visit. If you're a boat enthusiast, they have a huge marina. But if it's a boat, it's not a ship. We'll be back in Trieste in the summer and we'll be filming the beaches. But in the meantime, check out our films on Dubrovnik, Zadar and Split. And please, subscribe to Doris Visits.